All right, folks, uh, this example of related rates is the one I call the lamp post problem. And this one, uh, in my opinion, is actually really easy, but it's confusing at first. You think it's more complicated than it really is. And I'm actually going to do three different versions of this same problem. I'm going to do three different examples just to make sure that you can understand how to do one. And I believe that the more you do this particular ex this problem, this kind of problem, the better you'll understand it. Okay, But they're actually pretty easy. Okay, so what we have here is... A six-foot man is walking at night away from a 17-foot lamppost. He's walking this way. The man is walking that way. Walking away from the lamppost. The man's shadow, now his shadow, is stretching from him all the way over to the tip here. That's his shadow because the light is flashing on him and casting a shadow. And this tip... This light beaming down over his head is hitting the ground at the end of his shadow. Now, the man's shadow, it's getting longer as he walks away. So the more he walks this way, the longer his shadow is going to be. If the man is moving away from the lamppost at four feet per second, then at what rate is his shadow growing when he himself is 30 feet away from the lamppost. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, that 30 feet away is irrelevant. When we get to the derivative and it's time to plug things in, you're going to see that there's actually nowhere to plug that 30 feet in, so it actually doesn't matter how far away from the lamppost he is. Okay. So, um, so here's what we do know, though. Uh, we know that there's a distance between the man and the lamppost, and that there is a distance between, or, and then there is a length of the shadow. So his shadow is another length. So we have the distance between the man and the lamppost and the length of the shadow, right? And so we're going to give each one of those a different variable. You can see that it's a right triangle, but, and, and this is one of the things that can snag you in because you think you're going to use the Pythagorean theorem, but you're actually not going to use the Pythagorean theorem because we don't care at all about the length of the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is actually irrelevant. What is relevant is the fact that the lamppost and this distance with the shadow makes a large right triangle. And the other thing that's important is that the man and his shadow make another right triangle. We have two right triangles that are similar right triangles. And that's the important thing in the lamppost problem is that you're dealing in similar right triangles. So actually we're going to use a, um, a formula of similarity instead of the Pythagorean theorem. And you'll see what I mean in just a minute. Let's say the distance between the lamppost and the man, we're going to call that A. And then the distance between the, or the, the length of the man's shadow, so between the man and the end of his shadow, we're going to call that x. So we have two distances, a and we have x. Now here's what I want you to notice. There is a large right triangle and there is a small right triangle. Okay? This is the larger right triangle and this is the smaller right triangle. The larger right triangle has a height of 17 and a base, the base here, is a plus x. If we add a and x together, this length plus this length, the total length is a plus x. That's important. The smaller right triangle has a height of 6 feet. That's the height of the man, height of 6 feet, and a length or a base of just x. So this triangle fits inside of this right triangle. Okay, that's important to understand. And so now, here's what we need to think about. Let's go to our steps now. It says identify any given rates of change. We are told that the man, if the man is moving away from the lamp post at four feet per second. So what we're talking about here is we're talking about how far away he is from the lamp post, between the man and the lamp post. That is A. So the length of A is growing by 4 feet per second. So we're going to say for step one, we're going to say that dA dt 
is equal to four, four feet per second. And then the question says, at what rate is the shadow growing? Well, the shadow is measured by x. So that's the unknown rate. That's dx dt. That's the rate of change in x over time. So if, the, if, the, if his distance from the lamppost is changing, then at what rate is the shadow changing? And that's what we're trying to find out. That's step two. Now step three says we need a formula that relates the two variables. Well, right triangles are similar, and that means that their sides or their legs, in, in here the legs, but all three sides are proportional. And a proportion is basically a fraction top of A over bottom of B, or over bottom of A is equal to top of B over bottom of B. So, or uh, let's say it this way, triangle one, A, side A of triangle one over side B of triangle one is gonna be equal to side A of triangle two over side B of triangle two. You can take any two sides of one triangle, make a fraction out of them, and set it equal to the same two sides from a similar triangle, and it should be an equal proportion. And therefore, what we're gonna do is, we're gonna say, see this little triangle over here? We have x, we're gonna put x over six. We're gonna do this side over this side. Leg over leg, bottom leg, the base over the height. So that's gonna be x over six. This is, the smaller triangle. And so now we want to put the base of the larger triangle over the height of the larger triangle. Well, the height of the larger triangle is 17. The base of the larger triangle is the distance from here all the way over to here. And to get that distance, we would have to add a plus x. a plus x. So we're going to put a plus x in the numerator here. And so this proportion the proportion of the base to the height in this triangle should be equal to the proportion of the base to the height in this triangle. And that's what makes this so easy, is proportions are actually easier than the Pythagorean theorem. The problem is a lot of people have learned the Pythagorean theorem so well, they're better with the Pythagorean theorem than with a simple proportion. But we're dealing with a proportion here. Now, I hate fractions. And maybe you don't hate fractions, but I suspect that most of you do hate fractions. So let's get rid of these fractions. We don't want fractions. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply first on this side. We're going to multiply by 17, and we're going to multiply by 17 on this side. On this side, it's going to cancel the denominator, and I'm going to have a plus x remaining. On this side, I'm going to have 17x over 6. Now, I'm going to cancel the 6 in the denominator. So I'm going to multiply by 6 on both sides. Over here, it's going to cancel the denominator. And I have 17x is equal to, distribute the 6, 6a plus 6x. I can make this even simpler now by subtracting 6x from both sides. And now, my formula, my final ready to find the derivative formula is 11x equals 6. This cancels equals 6a. This is my formula right here. And that's really easy. Now I just got to find the derivative of that. Because step four, plug in for constants. x is changing and a is changing. So we're not going to plug in for anything. So now step five, I'm going to ddt every term. Step five, the derivative of 11x is 11 dx dt is equal to the derivative of 6a is 6 dA dt, and now look, I only have two variables. I don't have an a, I don't have an x. I only have the rate of change in x and the rate of change in a. And I'm trying to solve for one, and I was given the value of the other. So this 30 feet here is irrelevant. That would go in for a, but there is no a in the derivative. So it's going to throw people off. That 30 feet is irrelevant. And so now for step six, we're going to plug in dA dt is 4, so we're going to put that here, and we're going to solve for dx dt. 
So 11 dx dt is equal to 6 times 4. And 6 times 4 is 24. 11 dx dt is equal to 24. And now to solve for dx dt, this is step 7. I'm going to divide by 11 on both sides. And dx dt is equal to 24 over 11 feet per second. Feet per second. And that's it. That is, uh, that is the rate at which the shadow is getting longer. Okay. Let's do another example of the lamppost problem. We'll do our second example. All right, here's example two. Uh, lamppost problem. This time it's a woman, and the, she's five feet tall, and the lamppost is 19 feet tall. And instead of her walking away from the lamppost, she's walking toward the lamppost. So we've got a five-foot woman is walking at night toward a 19-foot lamppost. The woman's shadow is getting shorter as she approaches. If the, this is woman... If the woman is approaching the lamppost at six feet per second, then at what rate is her shadow shrinking when she is 37 feet away from the lamppost? Okay, so it's the same idea here. We have two right triangles that are similar right triangles. And the length of this woman's shadow, we're going to call that X, and her distance from the lamppost, we're going to call that A. And so we have two triangles. We have a triangle that, that is 19, uh, has a height of 19, and a base of A plus X. And then we have this smaller triangle made up by the five-foot woman, so the height of the smaller triangle is five feet, and the base is equal to X. And what we're told is that she is moving toward the lamppost that direction, at the rate of six feet per second. So that means the given rate of change is A is changing, dA dt, at the rate of six feet per second. It's getting smaller at six feet per second, so it's negative six. And then it's asking at what rate is her shadow, x, changing? So step two is dx dt. That's what we're trying to solve for. Step three, we need a formula that relates these variables. Well, look, x is the base of one triangle, and a plus x is the base of another triangle. So we're, since they're similar triangles, we're going to put the proportion of their base over height. Base over height. For the first triangle, it's x over 5. That's the smaller one. So x over 5, base over height, is equal to base over height. a plus x over 19. And so now, if you want to this time, I know I did it the long way in the last example, and you might have been going crazy saying, Mr. Ryan, please just cross multiply. All right, I'll cross multiply in this one. Uh, for those of you that don't know, you can cancel the denominators. If you have a fraction equals a fraction, you can cancel the denominators by cross multiplying. I can do 19 times x. It's 19x equals... 5 times a plus x, but i got to distribute the 5. 5 times a, 5 times x. 5a plus 5x. Now I'm going to subtract 5x on both sides, and I get 14x is equal to 5a. Okay? All right, so now that is our form. So this is the relationship between a and x. And so now uh, we're going to plug in for constants. Oh, I'm sorry. I should, yeah, yeah, plug in for content, constants. A is, not change, or A is changing, and X is changing. They're both changing, so we're not going to plug any constants in. So we're going to go to step 5, which is DDT every term. So step 5, we're going to find the derivative. Derivative of 14X is 14 DX DT. Derivative of 5A is 5 DA DT. And we're done with 5. Now for step 6, we are going to plug in all the given and implied values. Well, the only value we have to plug in is dA dt, which is negative 6. We'll put that right here. So we've got 14 dx dt, that's what we're solving for, is equal to 5 times negative 6. So we have 14 dx dt is equal to 5 times negative 6 is negative 30. Last step, step 7, solve for dx dt. We'll divide by 14 on both sides. 
We can cancel a 2 and dx dt is going to be equal to negative 15 over 7 feet per second. And because it's negative, that means that her shadow is shrinking. And the question already asks about shrinking. So we're, we're going to interpret the negative as getting smaller or decreasing or shrinking. So her shadow is shrinking at 15 over 7 feet per second, not shrinking at negative 15 over 7 feet per second. We interpret the negative sign as a, as a verbal word, as, a, as language. This is language, then we put the number. So shrinking, shrinking at 15 over 7 feet per second. Okay, let's do one more example of the lamppost problem. All right, here's our third example of the lamppost problem. Only we're not going to do a person walking, and it's not a lamp post, but it is a lamp. A ball with a diameter of 18 inches is rolling away from a 42-inch lamp. So let's see here. We've got a lamp, let's say, sitting on the floor. Let's get a lamp shade. And it's lit up. It's shining light. Okay. Get a lamp on the floor, and there's a ball rolling away, and it has, a, it has a diameter of 18 inches. If the ball has a diameter of 18 inches, then that means no matter, it's, it's a sphere. So if it's sitting on the floor, it's always 18 inches off the floor. So this, the vertical distance here, the vertical distance of this ball is 18 inches. That's not a very good 18 put it here, 18 inches. The lamp is 42 inches tall. And the lamp is on the floor, and the ball is on the floor, and the lamp is shining light against the ball and hitting the ground right there. So again, we have two similar right triangles. So it's, it's the, it's the, Lamp post problem all over again. And the ball's rolling away from the lamp at uh, the rate of 30 inches per second. The ball's shadow, the shadow, it starts at the bottom of the ball and extends to the end where the light hits the floor. We're going to call that x. The ball's shadow is x, and the distance between the lamp and the ball, we're going to call that a, just like we did in the last two problems. The ball shadow is getting longer as it rolls away. At what rate is the ball's shadow growing when the ball is 85 inches away from the lamp? And just like the last two problems, that 85 inches is irrelevant. You don't even need that information for this problem. Okay? So we have two right triangles. One of them has a base of x and a height of 18, and a height of 18. The other one has a base of a plus x. The larger one has a base of a plus x and a height of 42. And so we're going to use those numbers to set up our proportion. Our fraction equals fraction, right? But step one says identify given rates of change. We're told that the ball is rolling away from the lamp, and the distance between the ball and the lamp, we've called that a. So the rate of change in a, a is getting larger, the distance between is getting larger at 30, 30 inches per second. So we're going to say 30, positive 30, because it's rolling away. The distance is getting larger. Step two, what, what's the unknown rate? We're trying to find out, it says, at what rate is the shadow growing? The shadow is x. So we want to know what dx dt is, the rate of change in x. Step three, formula. We need a formula that relates a to x. Well, those are both lengths or parts of lengths of right triangles that are similar to each other. So we can just set up a proportion. Uh, we can do base over height. We're going to do base over height. So we could do height over base, but if we did height over base, it might be a little harder to do the math. It won't really because we can cross multiply, but I think it makes more sense if we do it as base over height. So x over 18 is equal to a plus x over 42. There we go. And now step four, 
plug in for constants. Well, X is changing and A is changing, so we're not going to plug anything in. Also, we want to clean this up. Let's do our cross multiplying. X times 42, that's 42X, equals A plus X times 18 is 18A plus 18X. And now let's simplify here. We'll subtract 18X from both sides, and we get uh, 24X is equal to 18a, which we can simplify even further. We can divide by 6 here and divide by 6 here, okay? But we're not going to do that right now. We'll do that in a little bit. Actually, you know what? Let's go ahead and do it. Divide by 6, divide by 6, and then now it's going to become 4x is equal to 3a. This is much simpler to deal with. Now, step 5, we're going to do the derivative. DDT every term. So for step 5, the derivative of 4x is 4 dx dt. The derivative of 3a is 3 dA dt. And now, step 6, we're going to plug in for what we know. Well, we know that dA is 30, so we're going to plug 30 in for dA. So 4 dx dt is equal to 3 times 30. And so now 4 dx dt is equal to 3 times 30 is 90. And now we divide by 4. Step 7, solve. Divide by 4 on both sides. And dx dt is equal to, we can uh, simplify this. We can divide by 2 in the top and bottom. And it becomes 45 over 2, which is about 22.5, right? And it's in inches per second. Inches per second. And because this is a positive uh, rate of change, that means that the that x is getting larger, it's growing, and this is our rate of change in x over time, okay? So that was three examples of the lamppost problem. I would encourage you to go out there and find a couple more examples. Go on YouTube and type in uh, calculus, related rates, lamp post, or just related rates, lamp post and you'll probably come up with something interesting. And sometimes these questions can become even a little bit more complicated, but with the basics here, you can, uh, you can then start with what you know and add on to your knowledge so that you can become better and better and better at related rates and better and better and better at calculus, okay? All right, good luck with that, and I'll see you in the next example. We're going to do the conical water tank.